Hi everybody, my name is Justin Stoney and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 76 of Voice Lessons to the World, the show where we help you as singers by answering your questions from all over the world and I'll give you a chance to ask questions later, but our question for this week comes from Richard R. in Surrey, United Kingdom, and Richard writes, Dear Justin, I challenge you to give us a top 10 list of singing tips. Well, Richard, challenge accepted. Manny Cooner, can I get a drum roll? Singing tip number 10. Master your breathing system. In singing, good breath support is foundational to everything that we do. Now, what does that mean? That means don't go slamming a bunch of air at the vocal cords. Any civilian can exhale, but a singer knows how to release a small, steady breath when they sing. Now, we know from episode one of the show that there's different kinds of breathing types. There's clavicular, there's rib, and there's belly. Whatever breathing system you choose, make sure you're not taking in too much and make sure that the air you let out is small and smooth. Singing tip number nine. Develop all vocal registers. Vocal registers are things like head voice, chest voice, mix, falsetto, different territories of your voice. Your head voice is kind of like your flexibility and your chest voice is kind of like your strength. The mistake that singers make is only developing one of the registers. So a singer says, I would like the power of chest voice and only does chest voice. Or another singer says, I would like the sound of head voice and only does head voice. Another singer says, I want to rock and mix and only works on their mix voice. This is the mistake. We want to make sure that we're working on all the registers. This is what gives the voice balance, strength, flexibility, and combinations of both. Singing tip number eight. Coordinate your larynx. Your larynx is essentially the house for your vocal cords. So when people say don't sing from the throat, really they mean don't strain. You have to sing from your throat. That's exactly where the sound making happens. Now if you remember from episode four of Voice Lessons to the World, we talked about larynx and style. I'm at an opera birthday party. Happy birthday to you. I'm at a choral birthday party. Happy birthday to you. I'm at a musical theater birthday party. Happy birthday to you. I'm at a pop birthday party. Happy birthday to you. I'm at a rock birthday party. Happy birthday to you. And I have different styles that I can do with different positions of my larynx. Now we don't have to learn them all, but we do need to know that the larynx makes stylistic adjustments. We don't want it to make pitch adjustments too much. We don't want it coming up as we go up in pitch or dropping down as we go lower in pitch. We want it to stay relatively the same. A little will happen as you go up and down, but try to minimize the amount that the larynx is a pitch changer. Now, singing tip number seven. Don't get louder to go higher. One of the most common issues that singers face is having to push volume, push air, push force in order to achieve the high notes. And I'm thrilled to tell you, you just don't have to. So just in a simple vocal exercise, we see this kind of thing. Pushing air, pushing volume to achieve the note. Now we could do... Basically our entire range at an even volume. And we should be able to do it. If high notes require air, they're always going to get a little bit forceful, a little bit strained. And so we want to decouple high notes from volume. Manny, singing tip number six. I 
identify physical tensions. Are there muscles in your singing that are engaging that shouldn't be? Maybe your posture looks like this. We don't want it. Or maybe your posture looks like this. We don't want it. Maybe shoulders are raising. Or maybe the sternocleidomastoids, whoa, are squeezing. Maybe my jaw is coming a little bit too far forward. Or maybe from NBC Nightly News, my tongue is pulling too far back. Um, Miss Piggy, are my digastric muscles too tight? And we want to take these physical tensions and basically say, hi to them. Because I can pretty much guarantee you, if there's a muscle engaging that you don't need for your singing, it's probably standing in your way. Drum roll. Singing tip number five. Incorporate nasal resonance. Now, nasal resonance does not mean sounding nasal, as we talked about in episode two of the show. If I want to sound nasal, I can widen the embouchure, I can raise my larynx, or I can even narrow my epiglottic sphincter. But I don't necessarily want that. What I do want is nasal resonance, which you can feel if you try an M sound. Go ahead, hmm. Nice, and an N sound, hmm. Very good, NG, hmm. Great, those sounds bring the resonance up into the nasal cavity and they help us with our flexibility overall. They help us blend the registers together and just have an evenness to our tone. So you wanna exercise your vocal exercises on those sounds and then also incorporate that sensation into your singing. And here we go with singing tip number four. Establish vowel accuracy. One of the hardest things to do in life is just to be ourselves, and vowels have this very same problem. We've talked already about a few vowels on the show, the E vowel and the O vowel, and if I take the E vowel, something like this might happen. Me, 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 Change to uh at the top. Really, I wanted me, 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 the vowel to stay itself and not shift to uh. The same thing could happen with a dark vowel like O becoming bright. Check it out. Shifted to uh when really we wanted it just to be itself. Now there's times to modify our vowels for all kinds of different reasons, but our step one is to make sure that we're singing pure vowels in our technique and also in our song work, making sure that the vowels are themselves. Manny Cooner, singing tip number three. Don't just sing, act. Sometimes singers develop a really great voice, great technique, the pitches are all accurate and everything like that, but there's something missing from the sound. That might be perfectly accurate, but it's not very romantic. My love, there's only you in my life. The only thing that's right. And we want to be able to go there, to know who we're talking to, what we're saying, what we're after, what are we trying to express. If vocal technique is the kindling, the wood, then acting is like taking a match and setting that thing on fire. And so I'm asking you to be brave and actually go there. Go a little further than you think you ought to go. My friend, singing tip number two. Plan to succeed. If we want to be successful at just about anything in life, we need to plan for it and also expect it. What does that mean as far as singing? That means making a practice plan and sticking with it consistently, putting in the work. It means treating the voice and the body well so that we can maintain vocal health over the long term. It means finding the right teacher or articles or resources that help us grow as singers. It means being patient with ourselves, good to ourselves, 
seeing singing as a true friend that's with us for a long journey and not just somebody that we check in with occasionally. If you plan for these kinds of disciplines, these kinds of successes, there's just no telling what you can accomplish as a singer. And last but not least, singing tip number one. Sing from the soul. Look, quite frankly, singing is one of the most amazing things that we can do. It's our bodies and our spirits expressing what's inside us that needs to come out. It's one of the greatest opportunities we'll ever have in life. So I want you to promise me that you don't let friends or family or enemies or voices in your head talk you out of it and say, oh no, maybe I shouldn't do this. No, you need to sing for you and you need to sing for joy. And I don't know, but I would think that if we got to the end of our lives and we looked back and we said, I sang we'd be pretty happy about that. So Richard and all, uh, I hope that I've risen to the challenge of giving you the top 10 singing tips. If you have questions that you'd like to see us answer on the show, you can send an email to questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com. And I just encourage you, don't lose that joy. Don't lose that passion. Don't let people tell you you can't sing. You and I both know that is not true. Get with a great voice teacher in your area, or if you're in the New York City area, or you'd like to Skype with one of our staff, you can visit www.newyorkvocalcoaching.com. I also encourage you to download our vocal course. This is a 12-part course that takes you on a journey from beginning singer to master singer. Hundreds and hundreds of vocal exercises that will help you reinforce these concepts and grow with your voice. To check that out, you can visit www.voicelessonstotheworld.com. I'm Justin Stoney. Until next time, make a joyful moment. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. But our question for this week comes from Daquan R. in Toronto, Canada. And Daquan writes, Dear Justin, I love your videos, but I wish you'd release a vocal course that I can do at home. Is there something like this in the but world? Our question for this week comes from Rodrigo M. in Salvador, Brazil. And Rodrigo writes, Dear Justin, I'm a classical singer who loves to sing jazz. How can I sing with straight tone instead of vibrato? 